All right, this video is going to be uh, talking about calculus uh, antiderivatives. And antiderivatives are essentially your stepping stone into the concept of what an integral is. But uh, before we get into all the integral stuff, let's just work with uh, the terms we've got, antiderivative. So basically, I'm going to introduce a little bit new terminology here. You're going to have capital F, okay? And that is the antiderivative, antiderivative of our original function f, okay? One thing that I just want you to notice is that when I say antiderivative, I'm just meaning the opposite direction. So essentially, the derivative of capital F is equal to small f. Makes sense, okay? So this concept, I just want you to use as like a check. Did I do it right? Well, take the derivative of it, you should still get f. If you're strong in your derivatives, then you should be able to learn or understand how the changes between antiderivative and derivatives are. So you should be able to interchange between the two. Anyway, um, one thing that I do want you to notice is that um, what's the derivative of x? What's the derivative of x plus 36? Okay, the derivative of both of these are the same thing, okay? It's still 1. It's still 1, okay? If y equals, if y equals, y prime equals, y prime equals, okay? They're the same thing. What I want you to realize is that this 36, or just number, if that number does not matter, it doesn't make a difference. So, when we are going difference, okay, anyway, spelling is not my big thing. Um, when you're going from capital F to small f, you will actually, um, you will actually not, um, sorry, when you're going from capital F to small f, you don't need to worry about constants, okay? However, when you're going from small f to capital F, you need to add a constant. There's no designated number like c equals 3. No, no, no. Uh, there's no designated number. You will actually be required to give a condition which will help you solve for that constant. If they don't give it to you, you leave it as C, or D, or E, or whatever you want to call it, constant something, okay? Basically, you leave it in there, and you still have to differentiate it. It doesn't just fly away, it doesn't disappear, you have to keep that in there, because that could be that could be anything, and it, and it will affect the outcome of your function. So I just want you to know that. And let's just run through some, some examples. Um, first of all, I just want to do something that's a little bit um, recall. Jeez, not my day today. Recall. Okay. Um, I want you to recall that essentially d over dx of ln x that equals one over x, right? Well, I want you to know that the antiderivative of of one over x. When you turn that back into the big capital F, right, you're going to get ln x, okay? But you still have to add a c onto it. And that is because we, didn't, we don't know if there was a c involved in f or not. We may be given a condition like, you know, that, that would give us a, a chance to solve for that. But right now, we don't have the, any of those conditions. So, um... Uh, another likewise example, d over dx, of just x. Or how about x, uh, mm, yeah, x equals 1. So, as I said, f of 1, when you convert it into big F, it still equals x, but you have to have c. Likewise, let's let's do the just the general format of it, d over dx of what I'm going to call Notice that this is just in a general form. 
but it's exactly the formula that you are actually using when you're solving for um, when you're solving for x squared or whatnot all you're doing is you say this exponent minus one and multiply the whole function by it that would actually cancel out the bottom the, the it would cancel out your your denominator and you would just get x of n so what I want you to realize is when you go from this x of n to your big guy capital F you would still get you would have your x n plus 1 n plus 1 would still be down here but you would have a constant being added on so I just want you to realize that that's always going to be there and you cannot avoid it um, and actually I'm just going to run through some uh, basic stuff that you probably weren't too sure of but um, this is really what you learned in the beginning of derivatives and I just wanted to show you that it all still applies just for just for peace of peace of mind so anyway you have your function and your antiderivative okay you have this and this okay you have c f of x okay this will still equal c capital f of x okay constants you just pull them out and do the do the business with f of x and then multiply them back in okay you have f of x plus g of x well what do we do here well doesn't really do a whole lot f of x plus capital g of x okay well what about this one x of n x of n okay where n cannot equal negative one okay that's a special case and it's actually going to be one that I touch on next well you know this x n plus one all over n plus one okay well keep going one over x that equals ln of x okay e of x e of x cosine x sine x sine x negative cosine x now what did I do wrong here on all of these what did I do wrong when you realize that for each of these you will have a constant being added on so I do want you to realize that that these will need constants I was just showing you the general form. And let me tell you that when you're adding those constants on, it's going to make your life miserable for a little while, at least. So I would suggest that once you do it once, see if there's any conditions that will simplify it out for you. So if you have a condition saying, well, you know, at maybe f of 0 equals two then you, you use that and you solve it with what you just got from one of these functions below and and see if you can just get rid of the the constant variable because maybe it'll just cancel out so but anyway um I'm gonna run through actually a few examples of this because I feel like it's a little touchy for everybody. So anyway, I'll see you in the next video.